and uh, welcome to the video and this video today uh, was inspired by a question I had on Instagram and the question went something like this how often do you go wider than 24 mil when taking landscape uh, shots and I gave a quick answer and uh, the answer went along the lines of it depends on the scene in front of you and if you're able to fill that frame with visual goodies something like that and I kind of thought afterwards it uh, might be useful to actually come out into the Peak District and show you the challenges of Big Eye so this is Big Eye and it is a big eye, I've got to say. It's a lens that I find really challenging to use because you've got to do quite a bit of groundwork to get that composition. And that's what we're gonna go through in this video. It's a little bit windy, so I'm trying to find, I'm gonna try and film in sheltered areas, but uh, if it gets too bad, I will narrate. So this lens, is a great big block of uh, glass surrounded by the metal casing that the uh, Nikon technicians put together and any 14 to 24 mil lens no matter what manufacturer will have the same challenges that uh, I'm kind of going to show you this morning so uh, hopefully it won't rain we keep getting some nice light over there but uh, not not for big eye big eye has to be for other things sometimes so that's what we're going to look at in this video okay for the purposes of this video let's imagine we've just had an email from a magazine and they want a photo taken of a stone wall using big eye at 14 mil okay so that's what we'll do first now getting a commission from a, a magazine these days uh, would be as rare as seeing a load of unicorns run down this path so uh, let's not get too excited so let's have a look over here we do happen to have a wall as if by magic so let's uh, start and look how we take this with big eye so what we'll do we'll put I'll show you the video in the Nikon D850 at 14 mil of uh, what we have in front of us. If we were to take this shot head on as we are now, 14 mil gives us this. And if you can see in the video, we've got absolutely boring sky. The sky is awful, but look how much of the sky that Big Eye can see. And that's one of the challenges, the amount of real estate that you have in the frame to fill. So a shot like this just would not cut it for that magazine. That sky is awful. If the sky was good, so let me show you a shot that I took in uh, Northumberland. In this location, the sky kicked off and fantastic uh, arrangement of clouds but I didn't have any foreground to build a composition this was as good as this shot got but that is is a pro that's an advantage of this lens if you've got fantastic sky you can build that into a composition so we haven't this morning we've not got fantastic sky the sky is grim actually the lights grim as well so we're going to have to be a little bit creative we're going to have to walk around a lot with this lens and this lens is very much i find a walk around lens it's not a tripod lens i very very rarely use this on the tripod so let's just change position walk around a little and see if we can get uh, a better composition that's going to work with big eye Okay, I've moved into a different angle for this wall now. So again, let's look at uh, the video. And I've got this shot. Let's just raise the camera up a little. So we're fairly close into the wall. The wall's leading in from the right of the shot. And we've got that tree on the left-hand side. But 
they want a shot of the wall and this doesn't this doesn't really dominate the scene and again we've got all that sky in so this is not going to work so let's work a little bit harder let's go higher up onto this ridge and uh, try a different viewpoint boy oh boy we're having to work hard for this shot and I've come up on the elevation and the video camera's way up there please don't fall over and I'm really having to get uh, positioned to try and get this shot and getting this sky out is just uh, virtually impossible and I've had to go in at 24 mil and what I'm going to do I'm going to kind of crop the shot as a pano and suggest to the magazine that they use a two-page spread might get more money for that well you would off if we was back in the 80s but 2024 magazines tend to get their images from stock agencies so let's put the uh, e, let's put the video up again so this is 24 mil which is not bad it's respectable we can crop that sky out there but pulling back to 14 mil we're just too far away we've got to really come come down lower much lower to try and fill the frame at 14 mil and we're going to have to if we go up like that still got a lot of sky to crop out but it might make a double page spread and we are at uh, we are sitting at 14 mil so mr magazine that's as good as you're gonna get if you want to uh, if you want this shot at 14 mil 24 mil if we pull in we can put that tree in the left we've now reduced that sky down and we've got that wall in the shot so uh, let's pull up a couple of shots one at uh, where are you oh you're up there we'll put two shots up one at 14 mil and one at 24 mil and the 14 mil will be a uh, pano crop which is something that this lens is useful for Okay, just sent another email from the editor. I sent him the shots. He loved them. And, and he now wants a close-up shot of a Peak District Rock taken at 14 mil. So that's what we're gonna do now. And as you can see, Big Eye really, uh, really makes you work. Okay, I think I've found a really nice, interesting Peak District Rock. I like the curve on this. It's got a beautiful curve coming up. And we're probably going to take it from this angle, looking in this direction, trying to include the curve and this side of the rock. So let's put the video on so you can see what I'm thinking. And uh, let's get to 14 mil because the magazine said they want it at 14 mil so I'm gonna to have to come up a bit high let's tilt back come up high as I can let's tilt this right back and come down and uh, okay let's put video on and we're gonna come right high up here to get this shot to get this in so we'll take that angle there and then we're going to come down and really come in close 
to this. And this is where this lens gets beautiful. Because we're in close now and it looks like a, a Peak District mountain from this angle. It really does. If we just bring the exposure up so you can see the video, it looks like a Peak District mountain and another one in the background on the left there. So we're going to give them two shots to choose from, see what they're like. But this, one thing to bear in mind here, when you're coming close with foreground, you're kind of doing baby steps because it's moving. The closer the subject is to the lens, it's moving very quickly. But look at the angles you can get here. That's really nice. I like that. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that with that little pinnacle on the left. And then we'll come up here. If we get the position right, we can see both sides of this mini Peak District Mountain. Magazine should be paying big dollars for this, I tell you. But look at when you start to get close in, how creative you can get with this lens. And just look, look at that, it's like a ridge now that you can climb up, gorgeous. So I'm gonna take a few shots, we'll put these up and we'll send them to the magazine. This is where this lens gets really amazing. So the rock's in the bag, sent off to the magazine editor. He's happy with them. They were very tricky. Aligning that, um, aligning the frame to get a really nice dramatic shot of the rock. Challenging. Talking of challenges, uh, he sent a return email and he now, to finish off, he wants a vista of this location. Uh, and I've not mentioned where I am actually, I'm on Stanage Edge. The savvy people amongst you that walk amongst this land we call the Peak District would have known that. So he wants one more shot. He wants a vista of Stanage Edge. God, they don't want much, do they? This is the view, the vista I've chosen for the magazine shot. And we've got this big rock base here. I'm gonna try and put that in the left of the frame. We've got the stone path going up onto Stanage Edge. And as if by magic, we've got some beautiful light just coming, just kissing the landscape. How lucky is that? Foreground's gonna be dark, unfortunately, so I might have to twiddle around with the processing but let's look at the uh, let's look at this on video we're at 14 mil and we've got the the big stone there I like how we've got the path leading off to the right and we've got the vista behind with some light on and we've minimized the sky although the sky's not looking too bad it's white and fluffy we'll probably be able to darken that in processing so mr. magazine editor Here's your Vista shot. I'm going to do some alternatives of this because I'm not 100% sure it's going to work. It's a little bit untidy in the foreground, all these dead grasses. So we might submit this one, or we might just see if we can work a little bit more at this area, the light's gone. Maybe, uh, let's 
just try this. I might have gone out of shot now. That's, let's try this. We've got some leading lines still at 14 mil. We've got some nice leading lines now with a the rock there. Not so much light in the shot, but it is. I think it's a better vista, maybe. That's, uh, and this is what you've got to do with this lens. You've really got to experiment. We'd be too much faff on the tripod. My God, with this lens, there would be faff. The faffometer would be high using this lens. And uh, let's just raise the ISO there. Okay, I'm not convinced that that is a good vista shot. We'll put the images up and we'll go and see if we can find another one. Also, this fictitious magazine won't pay us. Not the pay us anyway. Ooh. There is a shot on the other side of the coin. There is a shot at 14 mil looking up at this path. So let's take that, go low down, dominate this. There's a rock in the foreground there. Let's dominate that one. I quite like that. And we'll put this one up. That could be black and white. Let's move up on the ridge. If it's windy, it's windy on the right. If it's not, I'll talk to you like this. Okay, when I got on top of the ridge, uh, the wind was howling and uh, I had to keep looking round to make sure the tripod uh, didn't fall over. It didn't, thankfully. I did get some shots up here, but uh, I wasn't particularly happy with them. Uh, I was trying to uh, use the ridges in this main rock as foreground and then building the landscape into the background and it didn't work. The colours of the ridges matched the the landscape so they kind of blended and collided so uh, as far as the vista shot goes we'll go with this one here for now and it was quite a good learning doing this video because i shot this whole vlog in just under two hours so i was running around like some maniac there was two reasons for that one it was going to rain and it did eventually and the second one was it's a popular uh, walking area and it did start to get busier as those two hours moved on but what i did learn from that what i already knew is that this lens big eye needs time it needs time and some of those compositions i probably could have worked on longer and got a better result. The wall, for example, I could have gone and found another wall that might have been better. Certainly there's a zillion rocks up there that I could have picked. I might have found a better rock, uh, although I did like the peaks that appeared on them rocks, making them look like we was in the peaks. Well, we was in the Peak District, but there you go. And then uh, the vista I know along Stanage Edge, there is some very nice views that I could have used this lens on. So uh, that was a good learning curve that was, and it, it really showed how much more time you need to put in uh, to using this for compositions. So for me, when I first got this lens, I was hugely disappointed because it was so hard to use. But as time goes on, you get to, to know what to try and do with it to get those images, but it is a lens where you need patience. If you've not got a lot of patience, then uh, this might not be the lens for you, but if you can apply some time, so thinking back to the two hours it took me to film this vlog, I'd say if I'd have spent four or five hours there, I would have probably got much better shots but that's the way it goes that's sometimes how vlogging uh, goes we have to fit in a time frame whether it be weather or we might have to get home for some reason but it's a fantastic lens it's a great focal length to use no matter what manufacturer you're going to use in the right conditions when everything comes together 
awesome lens to have. Back to the original question, how often do we go wider than 24 mil? Probably not often enough because there's probably shots out there to be had but we as photographers just have to apply that time and patience to using big eye. Okay so what's coming up on the channel? Well me and Eddie are uh, defecting to Wales for two trips so uh, we're off to the Brecon Beacons and we're going somewhere that's very hard to pronounce so I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it and uh, we're also going to go to Dinorwick uh, Quarry which uh, we are really excited about because there's some uh, really great opportunities there these two days for me it's going to be around about a three hour 40 minute drive it is a bit closer he's in Stoke-on-Trent I'm in Nottingham so uh, yeah it's going to be a very long day and it might be the day where I film two vlogs in one day we're, we're going to go for it well I'm thinking of going for it because I think when you're going that distance you've got to make the most of that time and, and the petrol that you've used to get there so for me I'm probably looking at two vlogs in one day two separate locations I'm also looking to get to the coast because I've got uh, a less faff video to shoot just to show you how in photography we can keep that faff level down oh we need to keep the faff down there's enough faff in life at the minute um, without having it in photography so that's what's coming up in the future we've still got two more uh, late district videos to go so that's what you're probably going to see next next week's looking like rain and snow so i don't think we're going to get to wales and i don't think i'm going to get to the coast so the next video is probably going to be uh, another lake district visit and that's going to be on derwent water otherwise i hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching um, like and subscribe to the channel if you like this content make a comment in the bottom have you got this lens have you got some secret that makes it easier to use or do you have similar challenges to use in it we'll end with a few images that i've took in the past uh, with this lens and i'll put the locations of where those images were taken and on that note i shall see you later on the next one